this is my first synth cable and this is my polyphonic synth cable. This one uses an 80 tiny 85 which I've talked about a lot. The polyphonic one uses an 80 tiny 2313 which actually only has a quarter of the memories of the tiny 85. Two kilobytes of program memory and just 128 bytes of RAM. But it has more pins and it has a UART port. Even the surface mount version of the chip just barely fits inside the connector. Whereas the Tiny85 I used a through mount version and there was enough room to have it socketed. So let me talk about the ways of getting polyphony. I actually achieved fully polyphonic playback of a MIDI file on an 80 Tiny85 a while ago. The way this works is we take a MIDI file throw away the stuff we don't need, like velocity and separate channels, so it's just a list of note numbers and their durations. And we write that onto program memory. And Tiny85 has a PLL, which gives it this fast PWM for a very nice analog output. Then a timer calls an interrupt at a constant rate, which manages several software timers, one corresponding to each note that's playing. When a timer overflows, we add or subtract a fixed amount from the analog output. This gives us a square wave. And this is the easiest way of producing a tone. The result is a single chip that plays back MIDI files with full polyphony. I've actually uploaded the source code to this and the MIDI converter to my site if anyone wants to play with it. Of course, the only way to change what it's playing is to reprogram the chip. The obvious question is why can't we stick this into a synth cable? Well, well, there is no UART port, so I had to do it through software in the original. But there, the sound out was, output was being produced by the hardware timer. Now, it might be possible, but I couldn't easily see a way of managing both the software UART and multiple software timers for the polyphonic square waves. So, clearly, the thing to do is switch to a chip which has a UART. Unfortunately, I couldn't see any chips in this sort of category which had both a UART and the fast PWM. But I had this tiny 2313 on my desk, and it occurred to me the way we were making a square wave in the monophonic version was just by toggling a digital pin on and off. So why not just do that on lots of pins? We can then sum the output with a bunch of resistors. So that's our experiment, really. Is it possible to produce a fully polyphonic square wave synth on an 80 tiny 2313? And the answer is, yeah, sort of. Um, throughout all of these microcontroller synth projects, I've concentrated much more on playability than sound quality. No one expects something like this to sound as good as a real synthesizer, but what makes this great is the responsiveness and the articulation you can get. It makes it feel more like a real instrument than a piece of software. So I wouldn't consider this a success unless it could support, at the very least, polyphonic pitch bend. Well, that's doable. Uh, we can skew all of the pitches together by changing the speed of the interrupt. Problem is, that interrupt is already running at a significant fraction of the main crystal. I gave this a 20 MHz crystal just because that's about as high as it can go. Uh, remember that the MIDI plug isn't going to provide 5 volts, more like 3. I did think about if this was using the RC oscillator, um, you could maybe possibly change the pitch by recalibrating the RC oscillator, but that wouldn't actually work because we still need a reference frequency to read the MIDI data. So the only way to provide a usable pitch bend range is to slow the interrupt down, and so sacrifice the resolution of the timers. For every bit of resolution we give to the pitch bend, we lose an octave from the usable range of the keyboard. All of the timers are 16-bit, but in this compromise, where I've given 5 bits of resolution to the pitch bend, we're right up at the end of the timer range, and the higher notes are only using the last 8 bits of their timers, and soon go out of tune. Having said that, it's just about usable. The quantization on the pitch bend is pretty obvious. 
I think any lower resolution and it wouldn't be worth having, but it, it's just about usable, especially for fast slides and things. As for the higher octaves... Ugh! Horrid. To conclude, I don't think this is a viable idea. Um, it's a nice exercise, but it just isn't practical. Aside from anything else, it took me well over an hour to solder it together. Solution is, use a better chip. Give it more processing power, make life easy.